Hi guys, my name is Shauna and welcome to my very first knitting podcast. Um, this is my very first video on YouTube and um, just want to say go easy on me. This is my first time. It's not really natural for me to talk to a camera. A um, little bit about me. My name is Shauna. Um, I started knitting of November 2021, so I've only been knitting for just under a year. Um, I did start out with crochet. I still crochet some, not as much as knitting. Currently, most of my projects are knitting related. I also do some fiber arts, like I just recently, um, picked up spinning yarn on a drop spindle and I also have a felting project on the go so that will be fun to show you guys um and in regards with this knitting podcast it'll probably be like any other knitting podcast um show you my finished objects finish show you my whips and then notions that I got like yarn and tools and whatnot so I'm really excited to be filming this podcast for you and hopefully they get better with time and I get more comfortable on the camera. Okay, so the first thing, I'm just going to show you like basically everything I finished to date because I don't have very many finished objects. Um, I tend to start a lot of projects and then don't finish them. So... <laughs> I'll show you my very first uh, knitted sweater. I have worked on other sweaters, um, just some that didn't work out that I frogged, some that are kind of like an abandoned whip because halfway through I'm like I'm probably not going to wear this. I did was starting on a sweater like when I first started out, it was in panels. And then I started um, this sweater which was in the round and then once I found out that I like knitting in the round better then I kind of abandoned the panel sweater. So anyways, this is my first sweater. My first um, finished object um, ever knitting. Uh, it's the sweater number 14 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It looks like this. Um, I knit it in um, Noro Silk Garden Solo in color 1. Um, this yarn is 45% silk, 45% mohair, and 10% wool. Um, I believe I did knit this sweater in a large just because I kind of half do gauge swatches not really so I just knit a size up just because I wanted it to be a little oversized um I held this yarn single stranded I didn't pair it with any mohair or anything just because this yarn was already <laughs> so expensive um and I've never knitted anything with mohair so I thought it looks good just the way it is and I really love the way this yarn works up, all the different colors, it's it's a really nice um, first object, I think. I think I did pretty well with all the stitch. Um, my stitches are pretty even. Um, I did get practice because I have started and like abandoned like three or four projects, so I did practice before I got this. It was like first time doing German short rows in the back here just everything is really cool it has a split hem on the bottom here I love the two by two ribbing and I'm really happy with this sweater okay and then um, my next finished object is something I kind of self-drafted So this is just sleeves I made. I'll put it on. Basically I just made a big rectangle 
I made a big rectangle and then just seamed it up the sides just because I really loved this yarn. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but I'll have it in the description box below. Um, yeah, so I only had one skein of this yarn. I really loved it. Um, I didn't know what to make with it. Um, I did start crocheting with it. I just wanted to make like a simple shrug sleeves like this. Um, but once I started crocheting, I didn't think it didn't like the way it was turning out. Then I learned how to knit and then I thought it'd be really nice knitted up. And it is, and it's just a cute pair of sleeves. And I really like it. I, I wore it for my 25th birthday and I thought it was pretty cute. So yeah, just something, it's pretty easy. I just cast on the number of stitches that I wanted and then seamed it up the side. So fairly simple there. And I've only worn it once, but I'll probably wear it again in the future. And that is all my finished um, objects. I know I've been knitting for like a while, but like I said, I tend to abandon my whips and I have like a million whips on the go. It's hard for me to finish something. I just like to cast it on and cast on and cast on. So now I'm trying to finish all my whips before I cast on anything else, but it is very hard for me. Okay, and now I have um, my whips. So I have something that's almost a finished object. I just finished knitting on it um, yesterday, but I still have to hide in all the loose ends, put some buttons on it, and block it. So this is um, Balloon Cardigan by Petite Knit. Like I said, it's pretty much almost a finished object. I just gotta tie in the ends, but it has this really pretty balloon sleeve on it. Balloon sleeve. And it's just a cute little cardigan. It's kind of hard to see. Let me put it on. I'm really happy with this um, knit. It took me quite a, f quite a while to finish it just because I do take this one to work on night shifts um, just because it was plain stockinette in the round so it was fairly simple to um, do. Um, the yarn I knit this in is Bamboo Joy by Premier in the color white. Um, this yarn is 50% bamboo, 50% acrylic. I just wanted um, a cardigan with balloon sleeves, so this petite knit pattern was the perfect knit for me. Um, I think I knitted it in the size large, um, just again because I didn't quite hit gauge, so I just knitted a size up and it fits, so yeah. It was the first time doing anything like this. You knit the bit, uh, button band along with the, the body of it. So it was a really cool, interesting construction that I've never done before. And I'm really happy with the finished um, project. Almost finished project, just gotta seam it in. I was thinking about doing those puffy crochet flowers or maybe the puffy, um, strawberries and putting it at that's what I really wanted in the beginning but now I don't know um because I do have like a light pink and a light green in the same um yarn but we'll have to see because I'm also lazy and I do like just the plain white cardigan so we'll see later if I add flowers or strawberries to it 
um, if you have any suggestions, if I should leave it like this, or if I should add the appliques, um, tell me down below because I'd like to hear some opinions about it. My next whip in progress is a summer top. Um, I believe it's called the Cottage Core Crop. Yep, it's called the Cottage Core Crop by Mezzo Makes. Um, I'm almost done with it almost this looks like this I uh, I'm almost done finishing the body and then um, there's a ruffle that goes here and on here and then I have to make pickup stitches for the button band so it's looks like that um the yarn I'm using is the ship ship cheese ship cheese whirl um it's 60 percent cotton 40 percent acrylic in the color um coral catastrophe it's really cool i don't think i'll get to the center color but um it's working up a really cool gradient color um most of my projects, I buy the yarn first. I find the yarn that inspires me. I bought this without even knowing what I was going to make. Um, and then I search on Ravelry, Ravelry for projects. Um, the Cottage Core Crop, I think, does call for fingering wool yarn. But I decided to make it in um, this cotton acrylic blend. Just because that's what I had and I wanted something um, top down with like a Reagan, Raglan construction just so I could get that um, the, the ombre effect and I think it's working out really well. Um, yeah, I'm almost done this. I'm really excited for it. I think it's working out pretty cute. Um, summer's almost over but hopefully I can get this done in time to wear it in the warmer weather yeah so that's another one of my whips my next whip is something that i got as a birthday present back in march um the first time i saw this poncho i was like oh my god i need to make this like it was so beautiful i loved it um and then I was searching on some local yarn store stores and I found that this yarn store in Toronto was um, selling the kit for it. So I asked my parents for it for my birthday and I'm still working on it. I kind of stopped it during the summer just because it is a little warm working on it in the summer months. But I'm probably going to start and pick it up pretty soon. Um, I also can only work at it at small chunks at a time because it does kind of frustrate me. It's um, it's an intarsia project and I have so many different balls of yarn it kind of um, gets on my nerves and it gets all tangled and yeah. As you can see, it's all tangled already. But this is what I have so far. It's the Heart Poncho by um, Noro. Noro. Um, so this is the front panel. Um, I make five of these heart patterns and then I'll make another panel and attach them together and it'll be this beautiful heart poncho that I'm so excited to have. Um, like I said, it came in a kit. Um, it's the heart poncho. Um, the yarn I'm using is the Noro... Curion, it's 100% wool, 
um, in colors 90, 154, and 124. So those are the colors. That's the same colors that are in the original picture. And um, I believe I'm making the large size of this as well. Um, yeah, and I'm really happy with the way it's going. It's just very annoying. There's a lot of ends. It's all tangled together. I haven't worked on it in a long time, but just looking at that kind of got me re-inspired. I just, and fall's coming soon, so I just want to have a big cozy poncho that I can curl up in and it looks beautiful, so I'm really excited to finish that one. Um, so my next whip is, um, this guy right here. It's got two little legs, no arms, and a little face. Um, so this pattern is um, Frog and Toad by Frog and Cast. Um, so this is, I believe, Frog. Yeah, this is Frog. Um, I've done his little legs here, and now I just gotta pick up for the arms. Do his eyes stuff him and then he'll be good to go and then i'll have to start on toad and then which is kind of the same thing just a little bit shorter and then their little outfits um so this is the first time i ever made like a stuffed like in a i guess it's not called in a groomy that's if you crochet like a stuffed project before. It's the first time I've worked with double pointed needles, um, which is, it's very finicky, but it's also, like, once you get the hang of it, you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, it's so cool the way his legs are construction. He has a little kneecaps. He's got, like, a calf, his little feet. Like, it's really cool the way it's constructed. There are a lot of mistakes, but from my first time, um, I'm not complaining. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I'll have tons of yarn left over that I can redo it if I want. Um, the yarn I'm using for him is Drops Nord. I also... And for the both of them, I'll be using Drops Nord and Drops Alpaca. Um, I'm really excited to keep going with him. Um, I kind of stopped working on him for a little bit, but I'm looking at him. I'm also inspired to pick him back up and at least finish this guy. And then um, once I finish this guy, it'll probably motivate me to start on Toad again. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited and, yeah, I can't wait to see what this guy looks finished. Okay, and now I have one whip. It's a crochet whip, um, and it is a year-long whip. Um, I am running a bit behind on it. Um, I'm probably, um like two months behind on it now but it is the summer and it's a blanket project so um i just work on it slowly um whenever i want to but i do okay so i'm getting ahead of myself i am making a temperature blanket um i'm crocheting it looks like this this is the start of it. This was January, February, March, April, and then May, and a little bit of June. Um, so a temperature blanket, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, um, you're basically recording the temperature of um, the day. I'm doing the average of the 
um, daytime, average of the nighttime for one day, and then averaging them together to get the temperature. Um, so, and I'm going day by day. So every day, um, I have a little temperature range um, assigned to each color, and then decide depending on what the average of the temperature is for that day, we'll decide the color. So you can see that um, this navy, this is my darkest color. This is when it was the darkest. This like this turquoise was the second coldest. This is the third coldest. Then I have this lavender, which is the fourth coldest. Then it goes to this turquoise, then this green, and then this pink. And then I have one more pink that I haven't added yet, but I'm going to add soon. That is the warmest color. So as you can see, year-long project. Um, the yarn I'm using is acrylic yarn. Um, it's the impeccable yarn that you get at Michael's, 100% acrylic. Um, now what I know about yarn and everything, maybe I would have chosen a wool yarn. I just thought this was the most affordable option. Um, it's still a cozy blanket. I can take it like camping or whatever and I don't have to worry about ruining it because it is acrylic. Um, but I'm really happy to keep going on it and I'm excited to see what it looks like at the end of the year. Um, I'm basically following, it's pretty pretty heavily based on the Let's Get Knit Faced um, temperature blanket. She uses the same yarn. I use, um, I'm using slightly different colors, but some colors are the same as hers. I basically did the same dimensions as her. Um, it's a huge blanket. It's like a queen size blanket. And in retrospect, I wish I didn't make a queen size blanket, but here we are. I'm not going to rip this all out and do it again. That would do my mind in. Um, so in retrospect, I wish I had made it a little bit um, smaller um, width wise. It should be fairly long lengthwise um yeah and i'm just really happy i'm using the i believe it's called the linen stitch um i'd have to look it up but it's it's a fairly nice stitch i love that it kind of looks like a zipper pattern um yeah i'm happy with my temperature blanket I gotta get going on it. I'm two months behind, like I said. It's kind of daunting, but I'm still recording the temperature for every day, so that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's it for my whips. Now I will show you... Um, I'm just going to show you my spinning. I just recently um, bought a drop spindle and I've started spinning my own yarn. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I can't wait to continue spinning my yarn and actually using my own yarn for a project. Um, so I will show you. This is my drop spindle. I bought it at a yarn and fiber festival, a local festival. Um, it's just a little dowel with this really cute um, mushroom pattern on it. The bottom has this really nice painting. It's a live edge wood. I know this um, drop spindle probably well, I know, like, it's not balanced, it's not, like, it's just not a professional drop spindle, but, um, it gives me joy, I don't really care, it still does the job, it still makes yarn with it, so I'm happy with it, um, probably not you, what you want as a beginner, but I'm very happy with it, it's very cute and handmade, and 
I'm happy. So let me show you the yarn I spun on it. So this is the very first time I spun yarn. I hand spun the yarn and I hand dyed the yarn. It was, um, I believe it was just Corydale yarn from a local wool, um, local sheep farm. Um, I also bought the yarn at a, well, the fiber at a, that festival that I went to. Um, it was just white in color, but then I dyed it this pretty ugly colors the first time I ever dyed yarn so don't come at me I'm a beginner and as you can see hand spun yarn um it goes thick and thin it was the first time I ever spun yarn that's what I like it um yeah I don't know So this is my very first hand spun, hand dyed yarn that I made into a little cake. Um, I am currently making a bag out of that stuff. I'm just kind of um, knitting it into this bag. Top down, here's the handles. And then I'm going to continue the bottom. I don't know if I have enough, so I did spin up some just plain white yarn that I still have to set. And I think I'm going to dye just green speckles, so it kind of ties in this green here. Um, I'm not going to try to do this again because it's not going to work out. Um, yeah, but I think it's very pretty the way it's knitting up. Doesn't look the nicest here, but... It is knitting up pretty nice. So that's the first time I ever dyed yarn. I spun it kind of chunky. It's kind of bulky. I never plied it back on itself just because that seemed kind of hard. And I didn't have a lot of yarn in the beginning. So I didn't want to ply it on itself and then have even less yarn. So there's that. But I did recently buy some... Um, new fiber um, and this is I'll show you the yarn that it's producing so I currently have three of these little spindles little um, toilet paper rolls of yarn um, it's this very beautiful like purpley orange pink yarn and you do see those sparkles in it. So I have been adding my own Angelina in it. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. So the fiber that I have, I'll show you a ball of it. So this is one of the balls of fiber I have. Um, it's, let me see. It's 60% mohair, 40% wool. That's what this is made up of. It's very soft. And then I just draft it out pretty thin. I'm trying to do like maybe like a two lightweight, maybe a DK it averages out. I don't know. We'll have to see after I set the twist and everything. I was thinking about applying it, but I want to have enough yarn to maybe make a sweater or a cardigan out of. I think I have like almost a pound of fiber here so hopefully I'll be able to make I'll have like a sweater quantity of that. So here's the one the place it's um it's a mill that I bought this from um in Ontario um, and they do these one-off, um, 250 gram balls, or I think they also have like a hundred gram balls of like a one-off colorway. So I bought three similar ones that I've been like combo spinning. So I've had a section of each and I've just been interchanging all of them and hopefully they all kind of match. So 
it'll make this very nice gradient and I've been add adding the Angelina which gives it a little bit of sparkle and I'm really excited so this one is one of them this one was called plum and then I have this one. This one was called Party Drink. You can see this one is a little more purple and orange. Um, this one is 60% mohair, 40% wool. Just like the last one. This one's a little more orange and a little more darker than the last one. And then I wanted one more ball of fiber, but um, this one is a mystery ball. So the other ones were 60 mohair, 40 wool. This is a mystery blend of wool, alpaca, and mohair. So this one does feel a little more thicker than the other ones. Um, but it's very soft. Like it does feel like it has more wool than the mohair, but it's very pretty in my opinion. Look at all those colors. So it does kind of tie in. The other colors too. This one's my favorite. I like this pink and the darker pinks and the darker purples. It's really pretty. So they all make into this one. See, you see the orange there and this one's a little more different, kind of. Yeah, I'm really excited and I can't wait to spin up the rest of the yarn. So I'm still fairly new to spinning, so I'm very happy about this. In my opinion, it's um, pretty consistently spun, um, but I don't mind that there's thicker parts and thinner parts. I don't. It's the beauty of self-spinning yarn. And then, if you guys aren't aware, this is the Angelina fiber that I've been adding in. So I only add a little bit to give it some sparkle and that's been really fun doing that as well. Spinning this one has been a lot more fun than spinning this one just because this was plain white and then I dyed it and my dye job was not that good but I'm loving the colors that this one's giving me and the sparkle and everything is just so fun. Okay, now I'm quickly going to get into notions because I think I have been talking for way too long and I don't even know if this is interesting or not, but, um, so I just got some, okay, so a couple, like a week ago I went to the yarn store because I saw they were having a sale and I really wanted shorty, um, shorty knitting needles, so that's exactly what I got. Um, I got the Lika Likey, however you say it, the Cypra needles, the 3.5 um, inch needles that everybody's been talking about. Um, I used these to knit the sleeve of my balloon cardigan and they were amazing. So I love these very much. Um, I got them on sale too because my local yarn store was having a sale um summer sale and these were part of the sale so I got them for it just I've was keeping my eye on these but after I saw that they were on a sale that I had it to pick them up and I just noticed they match they match my hair <laughs> that's awesome okay <laughs> so I'm really happy with this purchase they're awesome I love the brand I have the blush set and the driftwood of um same brand but the long five Inch, so five inch or five cent, five inch needles, and I love the pink color. And then, um, I really wanted a metal pair just because I have the wood pair, and I think the metal does better with some fibers compared to the wood. Like when I'm knitting on this cotton acrylic blend, when I was starting, the yarn was grabbing so. It's good to have a metal pair, in my opinion. The next thing I got um, was these Chicago Chowgu, um 9-inch circulars um, and 2.25 millimeter needles because I want to try making socks. I've never made socks before, um, and I really want 
want to. So I'm going to cast on some very soon. Um, I heard these were the best. Um, and this is what my local yarn store carried. So I'm very excited to be working with those. And to go along with those, I just got some yarn mail in the mail, which is my favorite kind of mail. Um, so I got this ball right here, this sock yarn right here. This is the Shopo Zour Ball Crazy. Shuffle, Zour Ball, Crazy, um, in, what's the name of this here? It's in German, I'm pretty sure, so. It's 75% superwash, 25 polyamide, oh, what? 75% virgin wool, 25% nylon. And I will put the name of the color down below because I do not know. But it's this very pretty pinky, purple, yellow. It's supposed to work up like that. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, so that came in the mail, and then along with that, I got three skeins of the Knitting for Olive Dusty Artichoke in pure silk. So this is 100% silk, barrette silk, I don't know what that means, but I got three balls of it because I wanted to hit the free shipping mark, which I did, and I saw this, and I wanted to make another summer top, even though we just hit August, and probably by the time I'm done, summer must might be over, but I don't care. I'm excited to use this, probably for a camisole number two, or is it the number four? I don't know, but a pretty camisole with that and then one more thing I bought this yarn for my mom um it's juniper moon farm the cumulus dappled um it's so soft I didn't know it'd be this soft um she saw online that someone made a baby blanket with this stuff so she wants to make the same baby blanket in the same color the color name is Lily by the Sea. Um, it's 94% cotton, Israeli Mako cotton, and 6% nylon. This yarn is super soft. I kind of want to keep it for myself, but I bought it for her to make a blanket, a baby blanket. So I have three skeins of this. And with that being said, I think I have talked for way too long. Um, I hope this wasn't boring. I hope, I hope this is okay. I hope that it sees the light of day. And if it doesn't, then maybe I'll refilm it and do it again. But um, hopefully I get better and better as the time goes on. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.